Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my travel eco perspective. So this same I so now or explain or so to be easy understand about the video in the other side of the hand. So the left image, so the how we cut in equal in transfer view. So the apart from the cutting to the head we call superior and below that we call inferior. In the coronal view, so something behind we call posterior, something in the interior we call interior. So to be understand, to be easy to understand in the my travel echo. So my travel are uh, display up side down and backward in the echo. So this camera so be where we uh, have to look and so what the value we can see on this cutting view on the this level we can see tricuspid is in the posterior and here we can see the uh, pulmonary valve and behind the pulmonary valve, we can find the aortic valve. And the on the lateral is it is the mitral valve. In point of view, for surgeon, they look at the mitral valve from the left atrium to the ventricle. But for sonographer and radiologist or radio which is the look at my travel from the left in the car. <laughs> so by that we can see the view like View from ventricle by sonographer or cardiologist. We, we can see the mitral valve at the posterior. The entry we can see the aortic valve left. Atrium. So the mitral valve occupy from the medial to the post posterior. So the mit mitral valve we divide A1 and P1, we can see uh, the lateral. And A3, P3, we can see at the medial. 
aorta we can see at the anterior and left atrial appendix we can see lateral with the a1 p1 So the echo beam is run from here to here. So we can see anterior and lateral and posterior and major. Then yeah, for standard view to visualize the metroval. First, parastenal long axis. Second is parastenal short axis. Third is apical core chamber. AP4. And four is apical two chamber AP2. It is parastenal long axis. So what we can see here is focus on the right size. So in the interior, what we can see is the right ventricle. And after that, it is left ventricle. So the white line in the anterior we call anterior left leg, and the white line at the bottom we call posterior left leg. So A2 is anterior, P2 is in posterior. So from the Parasit and long axis view window. We are able to see A2 and P2 of the mitral So from this view, we can see the other scallop structure by just uh, by simple change in angulation of the transducer. So we can see the superior, I mean, toward left ventricle outflow. We can identify A1, P1. And toward left, when they call inflow, we can identify A3, P3. Parastinal analysis again. No, it is a uh, mistake. So here is we call parastenal uh, short axis. So in this view, we can visualize six scallop of the anterior and posterior left leg. So on the same end, we can see all of the A1, A2, A3, P1, P2, P3 by the parastenal short axis.
on maybe you on on this view on the left side of the mitral valve we call posterior posterior medial commissure and in the middle in the anterior we call anterior portion in the right side of the mitral valve we call anterior lateral commissure and the posterior portion but we can divide the anterior portion by from the lateral we call A1 and then the middle we call A2 and the major portion we call A3. In the posterior at the lateral we call P1, middle we call P2 and the major we call P3. This image so about papillary muscle in the image and how we can identify that. So on the left side, we call posterior major papillary muscle and the right side we call anterior lateral papillary muscle. On the apical form view of AP4, we can identify A3, A2, and P1. On this view also, we can see more about scallop by just entry angulation and in the bring into pi, uh, apical pi chamber to visualize A1 and P1 and the anterior Anterior lateral commissure. And angle inferior to visualize long axis of coronary sinus to visualize AC, PC, and the posterior major commissure. I pick out two chamber or AP2. So from the AP2 standard view, we can visualize P3 A2 and P1. Why do we see the middle scallop of the A2? This is because we are viewing the mitral valve at the angle where both coaptation points occur, causing A2 to disappear during yester. So from a P2 or apical to chamber stand W, we can identify more scallop by angulating 
our transducer. If we angle the transducer anterior, we will visualize a long anterior left leg and a short posterior. If we angle it posterior, we, we will not visualize a, a, a co-optation zone imaging the posterior reflex and mostly P2. To summarize, so image on the upper left side, the, so about the how the image of the apical apical core chamber and the left below so how to image the parasternal long axis look like and on the right upper so about the how to image how or how to obtain the apical two chamber and the right below so the parasternal long short axis look like Transthoracic echo mitral scalloping. For us, the long axis, we can see A to P2. For us, the long short axis, we can see AC, A2, A1, and P3, P2, P1. Apical for chamber, we can see AC, A2, P1. Apical two chamber, we can see P3, A2, and P1. Thank you.